Hi, I'm Hugh from SRI, and um, this video we're going to talk a little bit about cutting tubing for gas chromatographs. So there's various sizes of tubing used on the GC. One of the most common sizes is the eighth inch swage lock. It's called an eighth inch swage lock because swage lock is like the big manufacturer of these kinds of fittings. They're, they're really properly called CPI fittings for chemical process industry fittings and they rely on a ferrule to make the seal. So the, the conical shaped ferrule gets squeezed into a, a conical shaped receptacle and then the nut tightens it down. So when you tighten nuts like this, you don't want to over tighten them, right? You want to tighten them to the point where you can feel a little bit of a squish, but not keep on going and going and going because that just distorts the fitting and it eventually just breaks. So you, it has to be tight enough, but not so tight that you damage the fitting. So this size of tubing is called eighth inch tubing and the nut that it um, fits in is called an eighth inch nut. But you can put smaller pieces of tubing into an eighth inch nut when you use the right kind of ferrule, which we'll talk about in a minute. But first, we need to talk about cutting this kind of tubing. So this size of tubing, the eighth inch tube, is used all in various places around the GC, including where the gas gets connected to the GC on the outside. So it's really not necessary, we don't think, to have stainless steel tubing because stainless steel tubing is very difficult to cut unless you have a special tool, which is five, six, seven hundred dollars for an abrasive cutoff wheel. And when you cut things off abrasively, it makes dust. And dust is what we're trying to avoid. We don't want there to be lots of little tiny um, steel or, or metal filings that then get blown into the GC where they'll clog something up. So it's important to cut the tubing in a way that doesn't make dust. Or if you have to make dust, you have to really blow the tubing out to make sure that there's no dust remaining in the tube because dust is not good to get clogged up into the little holes inside the GC. There's a couple of easy ways of cutting tubing. Um, we sometimes provide this tool. It's typically called a wire stripper or cutter, but we've repurposed it into a tubing cutter. So there's various brands of uh, wire strippers on the market. We've bought a lot of them and we like this particular one. That one is an Irwin vice grip. It's, it's a hardened um, steel so it doesn't get dull quicker. Some of the other ones that we've tried on the market, the, the steel is so soft that as soon as you try to cut something, it gets dull. And then we've also in the past used this one here from a company called Miller. And this one works okay too, but this one got very expensive and this one was reasonably priced. So we've kind of migrated from this one to that one. But let me show you how they work. So the, the key with using these wire strippers to cut tubing is that you have to position the wire stripper perfectly 90 degrees to the tube that you want to cut. And when you do cut, you can't cut slow. You have to cut authoritatively and quickly. So bam, just snip it off like that and it makes a perfect cut that doesn't have any sharp edges or burrs or require any subsequent filing or machining. And that's what you're after because you don't want there to be dust. So when you cut, Sometimes you can make an even better cut by cutting close to the edge of the tubing because then the tubing doesn't have this tendency to bend in the middle. So when you cut close to the end, it makes an even better cut. So usually what we do is we cut once in the middle of the tubing to get it to the right size and then we make another cut right at the end in order to get that perfect cut. So this is called eighth inch copper tubing and this is what we would typically use to connect gases to the GC inside the GC, there's a variety of places where there's 16th inch stainless steel tubing. So this is also easy to cut with this tube, this cutter, right? So you, you position the tubing cutter 90 degrees to the tube and then you cut fast and hard. And then if you want to really make a nice cut, you, you go about a millimeter or two from the end, same thing, cut really fast and you get a really nice cut where it doesn't smear the hole out or close the hole. So. This is important to have the ability to cut tubing because there's many times in the GC where you have to remove a bad fitting and connect a, a better one. So um, you need to develop, you need to have this tool. They're not expensive. They're 10 or $15 on Amazon. And you learn how to do it without dulling the tube. If you make a mistake and you, you don't 
cut it correctly and you smear the tubing, chances are you ruined the tool because as soon as those cutting surfaces get dull, then it never makes a good cut again. So if you ruin it, just have to buy another one. So there's another size of um, tube called 0.53 millimeter capillary tubing. And this, okay. we don't use this to cut. You could, it, it does cut this, but there's a better way because when you cut this tubing, it's so, it, it just doesn't work well. It closes off the hole. So there's a, another way of cutting this kind of tubing that uses some kind of a sharp object like this. This is a, a little triangle file. And the trick with this kind of tubing is that you put the, the tube across two fingers and then you make a nice quick gash. And then wherever you made the gash, you put your fingernail under the gash and then it just snaps off clean. You don't have to do any subsequent machining. Sometimes people use something called a, a, a scoring wafer. They, they oftentimes come free with the column. If you buy it like from Restec, they'll, they'll give you a, a free scoring wafer with the column. And the, the scoring wafer is just a very hard ceramic. So you do the same thing. You position the column between your two fingers. You make a quick cut and then you snap it off right where the underside of the cut was. So that's the story on cutting tubing for gas chromatographs.